Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. Today, I'm going to show you how you can build your own flame detector circuit. Now, you can go on eBay or Amazon, Geek, a bunch of different places, Deals Extremes, and you can buy these little boards that are built. Uh, it's the same thing, basically. But uh, the problem with those boards is the whole thing is there in the, um, the detector is mounted to the board. Well, let's say you don't want to have that whole board being right next to where you're going to detect the flame. By building your own, and also you're talking like a dollar if you build your own. Between all the components and parts, about a dollar. And it's real cheap and the nice thing is you can take and extend the sensor and we're just using a um, infrared transistor or also known as an infrared diode and um, you could extend that with some wires many feet away and it, it would still work um, if you started trying to run the thing like 50 feet away yeah you're gonna run into some problems there but it's a super simple project to put together and build, and you can use this with your Arduinos, your Raspberry Pis. Um, you can use it as standalone, as you know, an alarm, um, a flame alarm. Um, <clears throat> one of the most common uses for these is if you've got a furnace in your house. In the old days, they had thermal couplers in the in there to tell you if it wasn't working or it wasn't on or it was off. And nowadays they use flame detectors, and it's pretty much the same thing as what I got set up here. So uh, what we'll do is we'll talk about the circuit here real quick, and I'll demonstrate it working, and then we'll go and we'll take a look at the schematic, and we'll go through how to build this. And this is real easy, real easy to build. So of course we're using um, our infrared diode or infrared transistor. Um, I've heard heard them referred to by both names and what we're doing is we're using a OP amp and I'm using the very super common 741 um, these are super easy to find and what we have it set up as is a comparator so when the reference voltage is compared to the voltage coming in from the sensor and we have the sensor set up in a voltage divider to get more stable readings. Um, if you try just hooking it straight up, your ambient light is going to be messing with it, all kinds of things. So you want to hook it up as a voltage divider. And when we get the schematic, I'll show you how this is all wired in. But um, So we're using this as a comparator, and to adjust it, I have a potentiometer right here. Turning it the wrong way. So what you do is you set it to where the LED just comes on and then back it off just a little bit. Now I'm using the LED in uh, this tutorial to demonstrate it working. But instead of the LED, this is where you'd hook your output to run to your Arduino board, your microcontro any microcontroller. Um, uh, you could use a 555 timer and make an audio alarm. You could use this with the Raspberry Pis. Lots of different applications. Lots. So this, the potentiometer, is set in the sensitivity. And, uh, well, let's just get down and show you it working. I got my little Bic lighter here. And, oh, let me hold it so you're going to be able to see the LED. There, it detects the flame. You can see when I light it, it comes on, and I can get... About oh, a little over, a little over a foot, maybe a foot and a half away from it, and it'll still detect. Now, this can be more sensitive, and you can get more range. The problem is, I've got a uh, studio, and my camera lights are running, and they are super bright. If um, this was in complete darkness or dark room, the sensitivity you could set this would be way greater. And I tried this actually last night, and I turned all the lights off in the room. And I got um, 
Oh, it had to have been close to seven, eight feet away from it. And it was picking up the, the lighter. And if it was a bigger flame, you're going to get even more distance, way more. Now, I'm powering this right now 5 volts, and I've got my uh, bench power supply off to the side off camera, and I'm just powering it um, off of that. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot to this circuit. It's super easy to put together. So with that, um, I think what we should do is um, we'll go over to the computer, and uh, I've already put together the schematic for this, and uh, we'll take a look at it, and I'll show you how to wire this up. And um, like I said, it's really easy, real easy to do. If you're a beginner in electronics and you're looking for a good little project, you know, start out with trying to learn stuff, this is super easy. And I would recommend this as a beginner's project. But otherwise, if you've got your Arduino, Raspberry Pi, other microcontroller, or whatever, you can buy the boards. They're already pre-made. But like I said, you got the whole board with the sensor on it and you're stuck to having all that right there. By building your own, and it's going to be less than half the cost, you can add wires and put this anywhere. Um, like I said, you, you could probably easily extend this 10 feet away from the circuit, and it should still work at 10 feet. You start getting much more than that, um, you might actually have to use another OP amp in there to amplify the voltage coming in off of this. But... Um, all right, well, uh, I'm going to fire the computer up. So uh, we'll go over there and we'll check this out. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Okay, I've got the uh, schematic brought up here. And as you can see, I used Fritzine to put this together. And I do highly recommend them. Um, it is free software and it's awesome um, if the part that you're trying to use when you're doing the schematic isn't in it it's really easy to customize and make your own parts and so if you've never heard of it and you want to make your own schematics the super easy way go ahead and just do a google search for fritzing and um, if you're interested in making custom parts i've actually done a video on that uh, just go to my channel and if I remember right, the name of it's the super easy way or super simple way to make custom parts in Fritzing. And uh, check that out. Otherwise, I didn't have to make no custom parts in this. Everything was already in there. So let's just get right into it. Let's start out with our main component is our operational amplifier, our OP amp. Now I'm using the uh, 741, and this is the LM741, there's a UA741, there's a whole bunch of different ones that are the 741s, they just got different letters, and I think that's just the manufacturer is why the letters are different, but you can use almost any operational amplifier that you can use as a comparator. So if you don't have a 741, you got, uh, what was another one, 538, or was it 358, something like that. There's tons of them out there. And any one that you can set up and use as a comparator that'll work at 5 volts is going to most likely work for this project. So, like I said, if you don't have the 741, don't worry. Just dig through your stuff, find an OP amp. And most of them, matter of fact, I think all of them you can actually set up as comparators. Not quite positive on that, but I think you can. Um, if I'm wrong on that, leave a comment below. I, I take criticism. Leave a comment. It won't bother me. And uh, i actually be interested to know. So, uh, yeah, we got our OP amp in there. And then we're running it as our output. Uh, as you've seen, I was using that LED. And if you're setting it up, use it that way. Um, I'm using a 330 ohm, and uh, I just did the ohm's law to figure out because I was using the, the 5 volts, and I used ohm's law to figure out what resistor to use. So if you use a different uh, LED, um, the 330 ohm you're going to probably be safe with. But um, some of them actually you can use a little more voltage. I was using one of the smaller 
LEDs. If you're using one of the bigger ones, there's like the 220 ohm resistor works with most of them. And I've even ran into some of those Piranha LEDs and you only need to use like uh, 100 and some ohms. And it just all depends on what LED you're using. But um, like I said, most likely you're going to run this um, to like a 555 timer to make an audio alarm or the output. You can run it to your Arduino and uh, you just check um, in your sketch. You just have it set up, you know, it detects if it goes high. Uh, otherwise, normally it's low. Uh, same thing with Raspberry Pi. It'd be the same thing. You're just checking to see if it's high or low. And pretty much with any of your microcontrollers. And I'm sure there's other applications. Also, if you think of a different application I didn't mention, leave a comment below. Hey, I, I like to read that stuff. So uh, throw it down there. Or throw a comment down there what you're going to be building this for and why you were watching this video. So... All right, next, um, well, of course, we're powering this by 5 volts. And we got our ground down here. And then we have our infrared transistor, or IR diode. And you can see, now this is the, uh, the voltage divider setup, but this could not handle the full 5 volts. And that's why I have a 220 ohm resistor running to power it. And I just noticed something. I did mess up. Um, before I post this on the website, and also, yeah, you can find this whole schematic on my website. Just look in the description below. Um, I should have actually ran the power from the potentiometer. I just noticed it now. I goofed. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, run your potentiometer. Don't run it through the resistor. Run it straight to 5 volts. I, that's my bad. I don't know how I... How I missed that, but um, we'll get to that in a moment, the potentiometer. So we're setting it up with a voltage divider. Now, around 7.5K should work with most of your common uh, uh, <coughs> infrared transistors. Um, if you're not getting really good readings and the triggering ain't working very good, try a little higher, try a little lower. But right about the 7.5K should work um don't go overboard don't go up to like 100k you do that it probably isn't going to work very good not be very sensitive and then off of that you know our voltage divider right here it goes into the positive input then from the negative input we're going to our potentiometer now one side of the potentiometer hooks to positive the other to negative now when you go to adjust it if you turn it and it's backwards, you think, you know, you want it to adjust the sensitivity higher, go in the opposite way than you're turning it, just switch the positive and negative. The wiper, the middle one, you want that to go to the negative end. But you can just switch them too. Um, and like I said, I goofed right there. I don't know how I did that. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, don't... Um, don't run it through the resistor. Um, it probably would still work. I guess, you know, it probably would work fine. But just run this around that resistor right to 5 volts. And like I said, if you want this um, schematic to print out, just go to the website. And before I put it up on the website, I will correct that error. And once again, I'm sorry about that. Otherwise, well... That's all there is to the circuit. Um, it's super, super easy. Um, there's a couple inputs on the chip that we're not using. You kind of see there's like a leftover mark. I put this in my photo editing software and just deleted those because we didn't need them. But um, there is one pin on the 741 that's not used, not hooked to anything. And then there's uh, two more. Um... Oh, I'm having a mind fart. I can't remember what they're for at the moment, but we're not using them. We're just setting this up as a comparator. So it compares the two different voltages. And um, when this becomes higher than the reference voltage, it triggers this on. It's uh, not like pulse width modification or like using a transistor where 
the brighter it gets, the brighter the LED gets. This is either on or it's off. That's it. There's no real in between. There's a real fine margin if you're like within 0 0.01 volts. It might flicker a little and look a little dim, but that's about it. Um, that's it. All right. Um, I can't um, think of anything else to go over with the schematic. Um, like I said, look in the description below, and you'll find a link to the uh, the website. And I'll have the schematic on there. I'll also have the parts list on there. And um, I don't know if maybe I'll throw the data sheet for the LM741 on there. I don't know. I might, might not. Otherwise, if you're interested in the data sheet, just look it up. Google, There's, you're probably going to get like 10,000 results. So um, with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us here today. If you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it big time, very much. And uh, also consider subscribing. I mostly do videos on microcontrollers, mostly dealing with Arduino. I do do some videos here and there on uh, other electronic, standalone electronic projects, kind of like this one. Um, this one actually could be used with the Arduino. And... Uh, I just decided to build this. I was looking for a project to do, and I noticed on YouTube there wasn't really a whole lot about how to make your own flame detector, so figured I'd put this out there to help you all out. So with that, uh, like I said, thanks for joining us here today. I hope you have a great day, and remember, have fun building. Hope to see you here again.